And I'm live, Vlog Thursday, number 339. This is uh, sponsored today by our friend Jack. <laughs> this is, uh, I am tired and uh, I need a drink. So I and also see, because um, I can see Tom here from Lawrence Systems and Tom here from CNWR. And uh, with the president of CNWR, Jason Slagle, is joining the chat. <laughs> the merger... Has been like the the fun part is done, like where we celebrate that we merge. Now the hard part where we integrate uh, is what we're working on now. <laughs> and Brett called me, so uh, I answered the Brett phone call. Uh, so he, I can blame him for being late. But you know, it was, it was good sales questions and things like that. Oh, Matt, we have a Matt too. Yes, you know we're gonna do some. Uh, talks now you can check all them out please down below there's a link to business technicalities and you can subscribe to that channel if you want to see some of the business talks we have matt i don't know when that video is getting published uh but there's definitely a um matt me and jason and brett we all had a great conversation um i don't know that like i said the date that's going to be published but subscribe to business technicalities and we've talked about the merger more on there from a business standpoint i will um, probably me, me and Jason or maybe me and Matt uh, will do a technical video where we outline all the tool collision. Um, that's uh, one of the things that's going to be interesting because people always ask, hey, what's the tools you use? Well, there's more and there's a lot. So that's, you know, what's your stack is something if you're in the IT MSP space, what are all the tools you use? That's a common question because there's a lot of options out there and we'll go through and explain the tools. Tom's used in the past to time the tools that are still going to be used in the future and how all that meshed out. So it's going to be definitely a fun conversation. Uh, let's see here. And I also am going to laugh about this because this is your problem now. I think I talked to Brett 20 times today. Yes. Yes. Uh, I When the merger happened, uh, Jason Slagle inherited Brett. So that's <laughs> uh, fun stuff. Vlog Thursday, alertsystems.com. I have one person that has an interesting question. And it's funny because I I had uh, I I was just in Baltimore a couple hours ago uh, doing a talk for a private equity place. That was definitely a lot of fun and uh, insightful. I just met some really great people. And this is this is the talk I actually made public on YouTube first. And it's a it was my talk on security. It was a, it was kind of fancy because they had um, iPads. Everyone got iPads to follow along with the talk and things like that. So um, I thought that was just kind of novel. They had that. And then uh, where I don't think I got any pictures of me up on stage there, but I at least have uh, a picture of me standing in the balcony um, of Boston. Uh, I got upgraded to a balcony room for reasons. They, they had a weird power surge and it messed up some of the rooms. So they ended up giving me an upgrade on my room for free. So I ended up with this like really nice hotel room that I was only in for a couple hours. <laughs> yeah. So that, that was, uh, what I just got back from doing. Oh, let's see. Oh, I, I like that in, um, employees of mine are in there. So this is kind of fun, but Conversations I had. I had a good conversation about someone running, uh, talking about security onion, Wazoo, OSAC, uh, a lot of security tools. And one of the things, and I talked about this before in the merger video, is like I want to focus on some of the longer form, harder to make videos because they take so much time to put together. But yes, I will be doing a video talking about that. But that's actually a question that someone emailed to vlog Thursday at LawrenceSystems.com. Gray log versus Wazoo. It says, I'm looking forward to the security and video when you get uh, get to completing it. I want to ask you about Greylog versus Wazoo. Both projects, which are a bit of overlap in terms of being Elasticsearch centralized logging. Wazoo has some particular features I want, such as vulnerability scanning, configuration assessment, and file integrity monitoring. As an existing Greylog user, if you were deploying security in Wazoo, would you run these side by side with Greylog or would you uh, move everything and all, or all your workloads just to Wazoo? So, this is not a simple answer. And the reason why is because with Greylog, it can do way more than Elastic. So you can say it's Elasticsearch based, but there's a reason I don't use Elastic. You can do all of the logging in Greylog plus all the different extractors, Grok rules, 
and then trigger rules. So when I did my gray log video, it, my recent one for 2023, I cover extensively all the features you can have in there. Wazoo is a fork of OSEC. The, both of these are really good tools for helping manage your security, but, and this is where the but comes in, uh, Wazoo itself is a nice security tool. Wazoo is now part of the Elastic. Elastic uh, forked it, but the problem becomes it's really just a security tool. Now, piping all that over to Security Onion's not bad, and Security Onion's logging, but it's not the same as gray log because there's a you can say sure i can consolidate all my sys log and wazoo logs and everything in there there's then there's that but again the but's going to be how do i take an action on all that data inside of security onion well security Onion's good but it doesn't have the same level of triggering and interface and tooling that gray log does so i would run both Honestly, like I, I would look at Security Onion as here's my source of truth when it comes to SIM monitoring. And I look at Gray Log as all my logs. Like I'm not going to build triggers in Security Onion for things like RAID array problems that I do have triggers for inside of Gray Log. Uh, Gray Log has all these different triggering tools that I've set up, and I covered that in my video where it lets me know different things. It can let me know of a RAID failure. It can let me know of drives. As a matter of fact, I was just doing some problem in troubleshooting, which I might make a video on this, but it's kind of minor, but it's a problem people run into where you can't get a ZFS scrub to work on a pool because there's a drive problem. And going through the drive histories and figuring out, is this drive the one that's causing me the problem? I kind of like the way that if you dump all of your TrueNAS logs, you can even put the serial number of the drive. You can grab that serial number of the drive you think is the problem, or if you know the drive might be the problem, and search through gray log and then say, hey, trigger if this serial number gives me trouble again, and then do that. So I would use both. Um, that's pretty much... Um, it's kind of... Uh, it, it is not, it's like I said, that's kind of my answer is run both, uh, is what I would say about that. Ooh, people asking about Dynatrace. That's interesting. Um, we'll start with this question here. What VMs are good for small business customers? Uh, not too many low cost NCR VMS servers. I mean, it's, you know, I'll actually share this right here for my forums. I, someone asked the question and I wanted to be articulate about it. Um, cause I had time this morning. I was sitting this morning. And I was like, okay, I'm going to give a really good answer on this. Or at least I think it's a good answer. Um, I guess I got to look at my postings. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Share this tab and I'm going to drop a link to it. It's just in my forums. So you, it's, even, it's, it's called uh, the future of cloud versus self-hosting. And I'm going to throw this in here to answer that question. So what good VMs are good for small business? Well, I wrote a few paragraphs on this. And the reason I did this is because I wanted to clearly explain all the parameters that go into whether or not you want to host something or whether or not you want to push push it out uh, and have it hosted in the cloud. And people think, oh, you can just take some things out of the cloud. Email, quit trying to take that out of the cloud. That's just, email lives in the cloud. That's welcome to 2023. Quit trying to run your own servers. You're probably not good at maintaining them. So not email. But there's a lot of other nuance back and forth, and it's going to come down to a lot of the factors. I have those factors all outlined in this particular you know, forum post. That's the reason I took the time to type it all up, uh, to give you that more nuanced answer of it depends on, and here's all the different depends. You know, I talked about payroll platforms, um, ERP platforms, on-premise apps that we run for clients. There's not like a silver bullet. It all goes this way or that way there is always a series of factors of which one you're going to run. So hopefully that uh, helps. How do you feel about Dynatrace? Never heard you talk about it. Uh, what are alternatives? Yeah, I don't use Dynatrace. Um, Dynatrace is a big company. It's just, if it's not a tool you're using, um, it's a little bit beast of a tool. It's used by a lot of big companies. And a uh, fun fact about Dynatrace, for those of you that have been following my channel for a long time, uh, their security engineer, was my friend Xavier. So Xavier Johnson was one of their uh, head of security engineers uh, for quite a number of years. So I actually am familiar with the product to an extent. I never really used it. It's interesting, but um, it's a little outside the topic on here. Maybe uh, Jason Slagle um, has some more comments. He'll throw some stuff in there. <laughs> Prefer new relic to a beast. Yeah, that's some of the challenges. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, going down the list here. I want to certify in certain niches that many people haven't yet. Yeah. Um, Now we're discussing Greylog Elk and other Sims here. Yes, we, we pivoted right to that. <laughs> uh, I want to certify in certain niches. That's, you know, I don't have any certs, but I don't have anything against people who want to get a lot of certs. They, they definitely can give you a good learning path on things of like, these are the things you need to know. What would you guys recommend? Unify, Omana, or just OpenSense? So my feelings on Omana, fine for home users. I would never run them in a business. Um, Omada is less clear, as bad as Unify is about having clear roadmaps, Omada is less clear. Omada's a copy of Unify with zero innovation. They didn't really do anything to make you go, wow. They said, oh, look, they copied it and lowered the price 20%. And for home users, that's probably enough, but I don't really feel that the Omada uh, product is going to be as on top of security. Ubiquity, love them or hate them, whatever your opinion might be, they are really on top of security for things. They Their security engineer is good. Uh, their security engineering and their uh, rapid response to problems with uh, bugs and product have been good from that standpoint. So um, I would definitely go Ubiquity on that. Um, in OpenSense, uh, I run PF Sense on OpenSense, and that really comes down to, and maybe I don't even know if it's worth doing anymore. I did a, a video two years ago comparing OpenSense and PF Sense. There's still not anything compelling about OpenSense that would make me use it over PF Sense. Matter of fact, PF Sense since the latest version, I would say, is even better because they moved to the latest free BSD. And to my knowledge, OpenSense still has not moved to that. So, yeah. Asking which network tool is never a simple is is not and is never a simple question. We'll add that there. Certifying networking, seeing less uh, people getting into actual networking. Yeah, you know what? Uh, VLANs are just a mystery to people. So your network certifications will um, cover and hopefully have you understand VLANs. This is something that even people who are uh, good, if you will, they're, they're well off into their career. They're doing well and maybe programming, even, even some of the people who are into things like pen testing and stuff like that, VLANs can still trip some of those people up of just the fundamental understanding of how to set them up. They may know how to break things. They may know how to pop a box and pivot around through a network, but actually understanding how the VLAN works. Um, it's one of those things you don't get it at all. And then it all just like, you see the light and then you understand it. Um, I have a video that's done. I have several videos that have done really well on explaining VLANs. And I think it's a popular video topic because each person may explain it a little bit different because each person may come to the conclusion to understanding VLANs differently. So uh, watch many videos on it until one of those videos are is the one that lines it all up. And you go, oh, I get it. That's how VLANs work. So. <clears throat> uh, do you have any interns? Would you want more? Um, if you are in the Toledo or Detroit area, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, remotely interns, I don't think make any sense for us. Um, we can't give you access easily and vet people as well. It, there's trickiness to doing it. So I'd say, but if you're local to Toledo or Detroit, um, yeah, that's, that'd probably be a little bit easier. Uh, Michael, all sorts of networking people from CC. Yeah. Juniper. Uh, just updating my PF sense on 2SEC2SM, but it broke my USB nut Damien package. Interesting. I have not tested that particular package with 2.7, but I don't see any reason because it's a package in the repository. Um, so it should work the same as it does in PF sense 2305. And I don't know of any problems. Uh, in 23051. So I don't imagine because it's not a, it's not a different package for 2.7 as it is for 2305. <laughs> Brett, uh, Brett Chittum, Brett. Oh, now we are absolutely actively hiring for salespeople. So if you want to work in technical sales and you would like to work for uh, CNWR and, you know, the whole conglomerate we have here going on. So yes, that's uh, we are actively hiring for that. 
Uh, do you visit Cedar Point? You know, I personally, because roller coasters, um, when I was probably, when I was young, I went to Cedar Point. When I got older, roller coasters made me really sick, and I just quit going. So I haven't been to Cedar Point in 20 years, because uh, I don't know, I, I, I have no idea. I used to get really sick on planes, and I don't get sick on planes anymore, so maybe I don't get sick on roller coasters anymore. I have no idea. Um, so I've been there. It's not far. It's even closer to the CNWR office. Do you guys want to laugh? Uh, I've never played with your ass. <laughs> One of your PF sense boxes you managed had a shared library error and package. So we use uh, package X. Oh. Hmm. You guys are breaking things already at CNWR. Anyways, let's go over to the other topics I was going to talk about. Where is the Vates thing? There we go. This, and because uh, I know he's listening, so I can throw this on here. Because <laughs> we got we to gotta actually do that. <laughs> yeah, don't break things, Jason. Well, I guess if you break it, you it's your problem. <laughs> Jason's a BSD guy, so I'm really not too worried about him breaking BSD. So if uh, the free BSD stuff breaks, I, I feel confident that Jason is also able to unbreak it in the same way. <laughs> uh. Greetings from Mexico. Awesome. International here. That was that's Mexico. Cool. I've not been to Mexico. Maybe one day. I got I finally got a passport. You know, I'm almost 50 and I decided I guess maybe I'll leave the country at some point. So, uh, I got a passport. But I will start with a minor announcement, but this leads into something a lot bigger. I've talked a lot about XCPNG and it's used commercially across many 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 companies. Uh I just the 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 speaking engagement I was just at, um, which is for a bunch of large companies basically that are pretty well funded and have a lot of SaaS applications. Um, some of them run their own data centers. And I learned the, they watched my videos and were excited. It's kind of just how it came around. They watched my videos and were excited to see me as a speaker because they had been following my videos and built their infrastructure that runs this large, I won't say the name of the company. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to, but it's a pretty big successful SaaS app and the entirety of it runs on XCPNG. And uh, they used to be a VMware house and apparently we convinced them otherwise. So now they're moving. They still have some stuff to move over, but they've been really happy with how it performs. Related to that, Vates is the company behind XCPNG. They have a partner program that they um, are opening up. And this is all, you know, something we're definitely going to be participating in. and. We're signed up for this uh, to get it all started. I just, there's some stuff, and I'll be roping in uh, Jason with CNWR to put this all together. But we're going to be one of the U.S. resellers for the XCPNG system. So they're working on a whole maturity of the reseller and a partner and everything else. Now, the part that people usually care about, and I need to do some updated videos on this, is all the new features that Zen is rolling out. So Oliver Lambert and his team have been really, really busy just not only with a partner program, but still keeping up with monthly, really good updates to the releases. And they do their live stream uh, that covers it more in depth that I'm going to cover here. But they even added some really cool config backup systems for automation. Um, they've really been working a lot with the REST API for those of you that want to build more orchestrated systems. So as much as I love the Zen Orchestra system for doing automation and being easy to use and i think looking cool the new version will be out within later this year it's going to have dark mode so sorry for those of you that are seeing the white version of all this but it's definitely um i i like that that you can just put all the um icons in there that makes me happy you know it looks cool i mean if you're going to do your uh logging server stuff you just you know you want to put logs on your log server here's my gray log server you gotta got both of them on there but the back to the functional things, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll do a separate video on there, but their project uh, K8s, for those of you who might have missed, their um, project is it, I don't know how to say that, Pyro, Pyrogross. Um, 
they've got Kubernetes orchestration that they're really building into this. And for some of these clients I'm talking to, they're really invested in some of this to keep expanding and making this even more automated, larger, and it's just outstanding. The XO Lite system is coming along. So for those of you that complain, the home users that are going, but Tom, XCPNG, I got to run this VM to run Zen Orchestra. That seems like a waste of resources. I get it. Um, they're offering the more basic. It's called XO Lite. It's a not as full featured as the X um, XO system, but it's going to be very functional because it'll be built in. So that is uh, really coming along well. Uh, they also added, I think this is a neat one here. This is a feature I wish they had sooner. Um, I always W get the ISO to put it onto my storage box to then, you know, install something. Uh, now you can import the ISO from URL. So when you're setting stuff up, you can actually just grab it and have it uh, drop it through the import. So you'll be able to do that right inside of um, Zen Orchestra itself. So that's actually pretty cool. Uh, they've done some enhancements to the raw VDI import export, uh, some performance graphs, you know, the, all the little basic stuff on there and some various performance improvements. We'll go back to those. I haven't talked about it in a couple months. They also have with the 5.83 version. Um, the new backup stuff is really cool because they can do these mirrored backups. So they're kind of doing it. So the problem before, like you could select multiple backup destinations in the backup system, but they ran at the speed of the slowest backup because they were simultaneous. Now they can do the backup and a separate job that mirrors the backup repositories. So if you, you can still do the other way or you can select multiple destinations, but now instead, or also I should say, you can do these mirror backups where you have it back up to one location and then mirror it to another location secondary as another job. So it's just really impressive all the stuff they're doing on that. Ah, uh, you never use true NAS, you just use Linux. Okay. Roost to deploy VMs would be an interesting use case. Oh, actually, can Roost do? Um, yeah, I mean, it's API driven, so you could do, um, I guess as long as Roost has an agent, because I don't publicly expose my XCPNG. Um, I mean, there's people who do, but my preference is not to do that. So, yeah. Uh, do I recommend it as a Proxmox alternative? Absolutely. I think it's far better than Proxmox in terms of scalability. I don't think Proxmox is in any way a bad system. It comes down to, I think home users are perfectly fine with either one of these. For the companies that I've worked with that have really grown and are doing this at scale with several thousand VMs with multiple, and this is an example right here, having multiple data centers where you manage this with one interface to manage data center level work, um, Zen scales better than Proxmox. Zen will scale to a larger, more manageable system at very high levels. This is something where Proxmox can't, but goes go back to your home user question. If you're a home user, do, are you going to scale to do data centers? Maybe. I've seen some pretty extensive home labs, but statistically not likely. Oh, Veeam support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure we can get them to code Veeam. They, I'm friends with the people. If we need to build Veeam in, I'm sure we can make well, a connector that gets everybody happy. But honestly, it's not going to be a priority because their backups are so damn good. You don't need Veeam when you have their backup system. Matter of fact, save the Veeam license, Jason. Just uh, back it up and manage it all through uh, XO. David's question. Hey, Lauren, she makes some awesome content. It's truly helped me kickstart my skills regarding VLANs. Do you know if Kotom supports built-in VLANs like the SG1100? One of my managed switches broke. Yeah, the quote, um, if you use any of these Quotom boxes, you can still do VLANs with them. It's a function of like if you load PF Sense on a Quotom or one of these other small boxes, yes, you can do VLANs. It does not have a built-in switch. Each port is an individual port, and you can then assign and add VLANs to that port if needed. Love the talks on business technicalities, but y'all really got to drop the whistle at the end of the videos. Oh, we got to get rid of the whistle. What whistle? You know, I don't do the editing, so. <laughs> and you moved from bare metal to Proxmox. Hey, compared to bare metal, Proxmox, definitely a big upgrade there. 
There's a way to proxy API traffic through uh, RMM or screen corrector. Okay, yes. Yeah, that would be a way to do that. Do you think working with local small doctor's office is a good place to start a business or is there a better option looking to start something soon? Me and Jason on Business Technicalities did a video called I Hate My Job is Not a Business Plan. And we walk you through a lot of the steps to think about a business plan specifically related to running a tech company. So I recommend watching that video because it's a there's a lot of answers we give in there uh, to talk about that as that aspect of it. Yes, you still I would still recommend getting a switch. Just decided my home lab server that I'm setting this up, uh, this Arvo. It's getting a, okay. I don't know what Arvo is. Uh, does XC, no, you LXC containers are a cool feature. And if that is your use case, uh, Proxmox is something you should stay with because um, the LXC containers or Lex, I've heard them called LexC or LXC. Um, someone leave a comment and flame me on what the right way to say that is. But the uh, that is not natively supported in Proxmox. <laughs> uh, you're saying no to the doctor question. Yeah. Doctors are needed uh, and cheap past experience. Yeah. Doctors are challenging. The <laughs> don't, don't start with HIPAA. <laughs> uh, if you were to hyper-focus a skill or cert, where would you go? I'm not the best person to ask for career advice. Um, my career is a very winding path. I'm actually going to do, now that I've merged with CNWR, I figure that's like one more life event to throw on my list. And I'm going to do a video on how I got where I'm at. But you can't really copy paste someone else's career path. You have to kind of find your own way. And because I, I, I kind of joke before now, I hadn't had a job in 20 years. So I'm kind of not the best person to ask on that. But if you want to know what career path to go into, you can just look at who's hiring and what they're hiring for and go, all right, maybe I should go into that. You know, uh, they're hiring for cybersecurity right now a lot. So cybersecurity is not a bad place to uh, learn things. Uh, do you know if there's any quote time trickery to add a switch locally, or is that something hard coded in a chipset? Sort of. Yeah, you don't want to. Technically, PFSense can bridge ports together to function as a switch. There's a million forum posts of why that's a bad idea and why you'll probably have problems. Switches are inexpensive. Unify switches are reasonably priced and not hard to manage. Um, there's other. If you go a level cheaper and you're willing to do the learning curve of the quirkiness of their software micro chick switches are pretty good too functionally once you learn them they're they're great it's the it's that steeper learning curve uh but micro tick is out there and there's plenty of others uh cisco small business switches are not horrible um but they're still more than unify so i don't know that they're the best recommendation but they do have local uh management um why can't why can I migrate XCB beam from one host to another, but not back? Um, that there's probably an error message I would need to have. You have to post in the forums what the error messages are. What is relevant these days? I think career path talk is something um, worth talking about. There's a lot of people that ask about it, so I I, I think Jason, that's probably a this channel talk. Um, you know, real world career path from people working in the industry. Uh, I, you probably have more insight into it than I do. So yes, well, I will add that I'll go in our Slack channel and I'll put me, Tom and Jason talk about career path. <laughs> uh, it'll work for sure. Just CPU switch pieces. Um, Yeah. Totally agree with separate switch uh, and the firewall. I'm running a D-Link um, DGS 11, 1100-08. Yeah, the Unify switches, I I tell people to use them a lot because they're just so cheap. And the um, store... Switching... 
They read our site, so I gotta find it. I mean, these little flex mini switches are like 29 bucks. $199 for the 16 port POE model. So there's definitely um there you go. <clears throat> 48 port. Like I said, they have a few different uh models, but the utility Wow, I forgot the Flex 10. I, I don't I don't think I have one of these laying around, but that's a cheap price for a 10 gig switch. But 199 for their light 16, that's not a bad price. And then you have some of these little minis. And where their in walls go? I like their, I guess that's probably under Wi-Fi. I kind of like them because they're a switch and their Wi-Fi at the same time. So those are kind of cool too. Yeah, 29 bucks. I mean, they're just not that expensive for a Switch. Um, I, I don't know what your needs are. By the way, you do have to run the controller, so you have to have a place to run the Unify controller because these do not have a web interface on them. But to get the basics done, um, they're not bad. So definitely um, look into the Unify stuff. All right, let me wrap up on the XCPNG stuff too. Uh, what else was there? I think that's really it. It was all the backup stuff that they done. I think it's just really cool. Um, the backups. Uh, this is more um, walking through how to script things. This is, uh, they added to their uh, REST API so you can script your updates and things like that. Um, I never had a need right now to do this, uh, but it's, it's because um, in the system itself, when there's updates to the pools, there's no updates right now. Um, but when you have multiple servers in there, there's a, a patching option. It'll automatically, if you just click a button, it just rolls the patches and it'll automatically balance everything. So they they have such a nice job they do. I haven't really taken the time to use the REST API to do it because the web interface is easy. And I like to do it on like a controlled, hey, I'm now going to go do this. I wonder what's using all the CPU. Something is. Uh, is it the Blue Mara one? Nope. Oh, it's probably Greylog. Greylog uses more. Yeah. A little bit. All right. Catching up at 2X, so I'm a little late, but actually Alpha has been fantastic. Oh, it's in beta now, by the way. And they moved from Alpha to beta 1 as of, uh, it's probably small to read. Let me zoom it in. As of June 22nd, they are now on the beta version, which is, <laughs> I can't help but make this joke. I went, to, I went to press the button. I've now officially lost control. Uh, my control key just popped off. Stupid. There we go. Tom has lost control. <laughs> I wonder if I can get this to go back on my keyboard. Well, that's broken. Oh, well. Such is life. Uh, there are boxes that extra Broadcom switch modules in them. I'm unsure if the PFSense can figure them, but um, Cumulus Linux can. Yeah. Um, PFSense cannot, to my knowledge, configure those boxes. The only ones PFSense can control the switches on um, is the one that are specifically the PFSense uh, hardware, like the NetGate hardware, they have the extra support for it. It doesn't recognize, I've never seen it recognized, I should say, in any of the other uh, devices. Take an opportunity to do an upgrade network for my church. Do you think I should go with a Qualtom or NetGate? Remember you had a video about the build quality for NetGate. Uh, NetGate's build quality is really good. And for businesses, that's what we deploy. I don't go Qualtom on the business stuff. Um, I've had a few of the Protect Tele devices die over the time. They died several years in, so technically they they kind of ran a life cycle, but they only died after four years. That's, I mean, if the firewall is fast and up to date, that doesn't really bode well with me dying after four years. So I've had a couple of them that had problems versus NetGate devices. I find them to be very trouble-free. So I just, I just like, like, 
with them, I never worry about. There was an update. This granted, I'm biased. This happened a few years ago. A few years ago, there was a BSD update that caused problems that had to have me come and do a firmware update on some of the Protectelli boxes. Awesome. Protectelli had a firmware update for it. Not awesome. Had to go on site to do a firmware update. I don't worry about that with the NetGate boxes. So I don't mind spending that little bit of extra for the NetGate boxes. So I'm trying to convince upper management that XCPG is a viable solution for our new isolated physical security, even though most of our company is VMware SI. My concern is support. They have, if you go to, and this is why I mentioned earlier here is the uh, partner program. They're going to be redoing this too, uh, to for clarification. They have full SLA agreements. I mean, that you can buy incident support. Um, they have this information on here and you'll be able to buy this through us. And we do support for this. So we offer support. They do support. Um, I mean, they go not just, you know, one hour response time on critical issues. This is your standard support agreements that you're going to expect in an enterprise. So um, it will you need support? They're making a bundled support package. So I think it, it's not on their website yet, but they will have that available as a bundle package. So you can get both. It depends on how you want the support and what you want to support for. 1804 is EOL. <laughs> I just want to say thanks for helping me do my first structured cabling project job for a client. Awesome. Congratulations on that. NetGate all day. Why would Unify Controller self-hosted on Debian Docker image per their calculation keep running out of disk space? At the logs are known to do this. Search doesn't seem to help. I have never, I have a recent video I've done in 2023 here on building it. And I've never had a problem with it running out of disk space. That's not a problem I've run into. So I don't know what you're doing that would cause it to run out of disk space. Um, I got my first job in 1995. I just went everywhere and knocked on doors and say, will you hire me? Um, I'm a brute force approach. So yes. There's no easy answer for how to get your network job. Just start applying. Apply everywhere. Um, get some skills. I did just have a force a staff member to either upgrade their personal phone to start carrying a second phone uh, to get them off Android. Uh, they hadn't received the patch. Yeah, that's a different problem. Okay, they're asking. Yeah, I mean... I uh I could log in to my Unify system. But I don't have the problem, so I'm not gonna be able to do it. But I mean um crap. Uh let's see. Try getting something installed real quick. No trouble typing. <laughs> this is a problem. My passwords are so damn long. <laughs> All right. I'm going to share a different screen with you. Jason's suggestion works. My suggestion works better than Jason's. And Jason's a Linux guy, but I think you'll see what I did here because this is how I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh, where, where did that stupid screen go? A window. There we go. Um, you can run. Oh, where did it go? Hold on. All right. You can run NCDU uh, as a command, and that will also give you that information you're looking for. So, um, it's NC, it's just, you can still have to get install this through uh, most systems, but this will go through and give you breakdowns of your drive and how much data is in each one. Holy, sh I got a lot of stuff in here. I got to purge this. How did 139 gigs in caching? And a bunch in there too. All right, I got it. <laughs> I didn't realize I had this much garbage in here. Good news is my memes folder is probably not as big. 
Eh, it doesn't take up much space. Uh, NCDU is a is a graphical tool for doing this, um, but you can run this on your computer and be able to uh, go through and uh, see what space is being used. This is back to answer the question of hey, how much space is used on my unified controller and what is uh, doing it. So. I I wonder if the unified controller would run on Pi Zero. No, not it, I run probably not. I, it would be terrible. I would I think that's a horrible idea. I don't think it'd be functional. Uh, Tom used Red Team Tactics get hired. Yes, um, that does work. First job found. Open a port. Yes, I just asked everybody. Arbitrary code execution exploit. Get his job. Yes, <laughs> someone's gonna say yes. Oh, I think some of my people realize that you have some tech shops. Yeah, I think they don't realize that um, all those letters after your name aren't a uh, Windows product key. <laughs> it looks like one because uh, I use is it your VMware, but no, you got uh, I know you got some Red Hat uh, puppet and something else certs. I know Jason's got quite the collection of certifications. So Jason's been doing some Linux stuff and he's way, Jason is way more BSD than me, despite me being, you know, PF sense and true NAS on all that. So uh, late greetings from Seattle. Glad to see uh, your salon just got back from DOL Seattle equivalent of the DMV. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Wonder stat whiz tree whiz file. It's just, and then, by the way, there's similar ones for uh, Linux as well that look the same. Hello, first time catching a stream. I find many videos very helpful, informative, entertaining, and keep me interested. Thank you for your hard work. Yeah, me unscripted. I don't know. So I kind of have a problem. Sometimes I lose subscribers. I think people realize that I'm very random when I don't script out a video. Um but I don't know. I still like doing the live streams. I get to, I get to interact with everybody. Uh, I think doing a network job before getting to cyber would be helpful. It is. Uh, if you understand networking, it's going to make your cyber job helpful. Yes. Uh. I still, you got to remember the people who are on YouTube, which many of them are my friends and we are greatly concerned about Red Hat, but, but the businesses, um, the concern is like, Hey, we'll, we'll wait till the dust settles before we actually have concern. So yes, it's, uh, I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. And Jason completely agrees here. Security is easier with networking knowledge. It is. Um, so FIPS, I don't believe there's, FIPS is a stupid, um, I, I, yeah, I don't know that PF sense will get FIPS, com full FIPS compliance. Um, it, it's just, I don't know. FIPS is BS to me. I was just looking it up to see if there's any update on that. Um, <laughs> the fact that it's like, cool, you have the cryptographic libraries enabled that we care about. You are now government certified. Oh, by the way, ignore all the CVEs that got the government pwned. At some point, this is my calling BS on so many of these compliance things that just aren't aligned with security. Because um, 40... 48's in the news again yesterday, again. Like, I don't care about FIPS clients, but I know if I worked in the government world, I would have to do it. So you might be stuck with 48. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think you can do FIPS with PF Sense, though. No, I, did, I didn't feel like supporting free PBX anymore, so I did move off of that. I mean, free PBX is cool, but um, yeah. I not using anymore. I got to put something cool on the screen now. There. Oh, hold on. Let me do it this way. People always ask what's running on the back of my screen when I have this up. There we go. So we got, now it looks like I'm hacking stuff in the background. All right. 
So yeah, we're not, we kind of moved away from free PBX. It was too much trouble to support it. It's just, it, there's one, there's one of those things I surrendered to the cloud because it's easier. It's in my friend's cloud. So I guess that, that makes it easier. Uh, first job, late 80s, working on a word processing temp, office manager for the interest in learning computers. You said yes. As it's downhill from there, buddy. Once you say yes, you're into this world. Seems any pivot from networking to cyber, at least from the outside, that's my plan. Um, it's the, having a, you know, cyber is easier because for me, to some extent, because I've got such an extensive um, tech career. So I can think about things in all the different aspects of tech that I worked in from database to uh, some coding work I did all the way to net a lot of networking and storage design. And so when I think about cybersecurity, I have all of those other facets I've worked with. So yeah, the more broad knowledge you have in tech, it's always helpful uh, going into cyber. Interacting with Tom is why I'm here. <laughs> Uh, use enterprise servers versus level one techs. Ooh, I don't know. Low power. The problem with en old enterprise servers is they're usually high powered. Uh, that's one of the reasons I, even myself, I said, you know, these things are kind of like small room heaters. Uh, and that's why we built the Ryzen server. So I'm kind of like, I, I would go for that level one techs, uh, low power build. That's exactly, and Jason nailed it. It's it's too it's too expensive to certify for FIPS. It's a big cost. Um, I don't think there's enough demand that they have that would justify the cost for it. Um, Free PBX is owned by Sangoma, and they are out for money. Eh, I mean, they're a business. I don't recommend the uh, controller on Docker um, because I don't know who maintains the Docker. I, I've complained about this before, and I've talked a few times about the security problems with Docker when you don't know where your stuff comes from. And... Unify has no official Docker. So the question isn't Unify on Docker. The question is, do you trust the person who's producing Unify on Docker? <clears throat> I have Greylog on Docker. It's maintained by Greylog. So people are like, well, you use Docker for Greylog. And I'm like, yeah, because it's maintained by Greylog. I use Bitwarden on Docker because it's maintained by Bitwarden. If it was maintained by Joe, and I don't know who Joe is, I would have concerns over using it in an environment, uh, unless I was friends with Joe. <laughs> Technically, you are doing free PBX. Yeah, there's still some of it floating around. We have a few. Yeah, there's a couple of them. So we have a couple. So in the merger, we, we, we've we learned that there's a couple free PBX clients floating around. SSO deployment do you use? Duo or Microsoft? Uh, Duo and Microsoft. Uh, there's some Duo stuff in the uh, CNWR. Mostly it's Microsoft, which I'm not the most, the biggest fan of. As I, I complain about it. I bitch about Microsoft at least. I try to keep it down to once a week that I complain about Microsoft. <laughs> Everyone has to use it. Uh, I, I have I have an out I have an account on Outlook now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Wow, I'm on late today. Yes. That is because um I was <laughs> This is where I was. Actually, I, should, uh, I have to switch it. I don't care about switching it now. Um, I was in Baltimore uh, just a couple hours ago, so doing a speaking event. Oh, we talked about the ongoing troubles of move it file transfer. Um, I mean, there's not much more. To I mean, it, it it's broken. It's still broken. It was broken before. It's broken now. Uh, I'm. You can you can pretty much bet money that Clop Ransomware is looking at every one of these stupid file transfer programs that are probably written horribly bad with no real security testing. So it's just a matter of time before what's the next one. Uh, last year was Excelion. Oh, by the way, here. Uh, hold on, I'll find it real quick. Someone's going to laugh. 
So while we're on that topic here, let me find it. Uh, uh, here we go. Let's drag this into a window. Let me stop sharing that. Hold on. Stop. Then we're going to present, share screen. Not that screen. Cancel. This screen. I got to... I have too many tabs open in my head. Chrome tab. Look, Citrix didn't want to be left out of the file transfer disaster bandwagon. So Citrix is like, oh, by the way, share file zone storage controller security update. Um, look at this. 9.1. 9.1. Let us, I mean, if you bang your head on the keyboard enough, you could exploit this. <laughs> Uh, Nike being the smaller vendor in the firewall space, how do you think they'll compare with the larger players like Cisco Palo in terms of features? It depends what feature you're asking about. That's uh, I don't deal well with like a vague question. You have to ask a specific question. Um, what feature would you ask? Obviously, Cisco has more features, um, but what feature is it that you are asking about? You know, is it the web filtering? That's where they suck. Uh, they're good, on par with other stuff, but they suck at web filtering. I don't think web filtering should be done at the firewall. That's why we use Zoros. I try to complain about Microsoft once an hour. Yeah, but then you're just complaining a lot. Managed file transfer is a huge money grab uh, because managing file transfer is hard. Turns out managing file transfer is hard and, hard and people get fleeced. Yes, yes. Uh, there's such an opportunity here. I don't know. Maybe there's still an opportunity. Maybe companies are just going to start trusting Google and Microsoft to be their file transfer. I, I don't know. It's, it's a garbage industry right now. And there's, there's no good players in it that I'm aware of. And um, so it's it's always a mess. I had so many login issues in my company. Uh, migrated from Azure to local cloud. Took them about three weeks to clear it all up. I don't even want to see dot Omni Microsoft again. <laughs> Do you make your own beef jerky or simply uh, own briskets? Uh, briskets and ribs and all those fun things. Absolutely. Uh, I don't, I've not made beef jerky in a long time, uh, laziness. So you never speak about pep link. Why would I, I'm not a, they're not a sponsor of this channel. Um, and actually I have, I've talked about it on a dozen live streams because people always pep link is they work. Uh, we've got people using them. Uh, we've, I've consulted. People seem happy with them. I don't, I don't have a reason not to use them. Uh, so, ah, uh, yes, Kevin. Kevin, uh, you know, if I can find a picture of Kevin, I don't think somewhere, but, uh, our friend Kevin makes really good beef jerky. He's, uh, he shows up at the events with bags and bags of beef jerky. So I look forward every time I see Kevin at an event, <laughs> uh, he, he shows up at a lot of the MSP events. He's a, um, just a fun tech guy. There's just, he's got a great hat. <laughs> I do not see this. This is a, a debate I have all the time with people of <laughs> I could see Nextcloud getting popular and I could see Nextcloud getting pwned. I don't know how well audited the security is for Nextcloud. I'll be honest. And what I do see is a lot of people with really old Nextcloud instances. Um, so the fact that people want to set things up. And they want to, this is how we, we reach, people reach out to us for consulting. And they go, hey, I have no idea how Nextcloud works. I want to hire you to set it up. And my first reply is the same all the time. What's your plan to keep it up to date? Oh, well, once it works, I don't want to touch it. Well, that's, that's a terrible idea. You're going to end up with a security vulnerability. And, you know, if it ever got big enough, it would then be in the news, just like move it or all those. I don't know what level of code auditing they go through. If someone knows and wants to email me at blogthursday.com and say, Tom, didn't you know they have insert name of company doing code audits? Hey, I hope that's true. Email blogthursdayalertsystems.com. But, but I don't know that to be true. So I don't recommend even publicly exposing it until that's, um, you know, been 
code audited and vetted. That's that's that thing I harp on with people when they talk about exposing these. I was actually ha happy. My friend Christian Lempot, I might do a similar video. He did a great job talking about problems in securing home labs and how people want to publicly expose everything. And I'm like, stop doing that. You know, use VPNs. All my stuff's behind VPNs and yours should be too. Uh Uh, yes, file transfer via guest accounts into identity tenant like SharePoint, despite your feelings of Microsoft, is the way. I, I'll, I'll agree with that. I believe Microsoft and Google, I'm going to throw both of them in there, are better stewards of this. I, you know, share files using either one of those, and I feel comfortable doing so. I think that's going to be where the future goes. Microsoft and Google will go, I guess this is something we're going to be able to do. You're going to stick the file in our cloud. We're, we're going to manage the security of it. We're going to manage the sharing of it. Um, yeah. So definitely uh, apply conditional access policies and such. Absolutely. I haven't had deer jerky in a while. Uh, my dad makes deer. My dad lives in a very rural part of middle of nowhere, uh, Michigan. So, yes, he makes deer jerky. I, I'm just lazy and I don't make it. I wouldn't see the enterprises using Synology files here, but I do use it. And I think it's a good product. I think Synology has been a pretty good track record of staying on top of security. I've talked to some of their team there. They they really seem with it. Like they're put together when it comes to the engineers I've talked to there. So they, they give me a pretty good confidence in our product. I don't think you're going to see them necessarily in the enterprise space, but I, I know they're shooting for the stars and going there. So <laughs> on-prem file transfers garbage because patching policies are garbage at most companies. Yeah, we can go with that. Oh, did you guys go to the beef jerky store off Luna in Luna Pier? So one, so Matt and Jason, when you're traveling back and forth between the the Toledo office and the Detroit office, uh, Luna Pier, there's a uh, is one of the exits in between, and they've got good beef jerky there. So alpacas, though, I, I don't think I've had alpaca jerky. <laughs> I see someone else talking about not quit for me when I update 2.7. Definitely post in their forums. Uh, post in the forums, get some feedback, open a red mine ticket, or see if there's an existing red mine ticket for 2.7 and not uh, for PF sets. I was looking at backing up my Unraid uh, to offsite Unraid box with TwinGate instead of VPN. Any thoughts on TwinGate? Uh, why wouldn't you use, I mean, Twin Gate's a commercial product. Why don't you use an open source product like, um, uh, Twin, uh, <laughs> hold on, Tailscale. Uh, my preference is for Tailscale. So, cause it's a, uh, let's see here. What do we got here? No. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I just got this comment from Jason. He's right. <laughs> he messaged me. He's like, we're like ADHD fuel. I'm like, yes. And between that, Tom being tired and Tom, I've been drinking before I got on the, before I got on the show here. So, <laughs> but uh, tail scale, I would recommend tail scale over twin gate. Uh, twin gates, a commercial proprietary product. Tail scale is an open source product built on WireGuard. And if you don't want to use their control plane, you can also use head scale uh, to manage it. So definitely. Uh, something I would prefer over that. By the way, Tailscale is built into PFSense. I, I use Tailscale on PFSense. I think it's great. Uh, when I travel, I have Tailscale on my phone, and I could just flip the switch and turn it on. And it's just, it's so convenient. I'm going to do a follow-up video because I've been using it a lot more. And I'm like, here, let me turn it on real quick. Show you. Starting network. And there we go. We've completely connected my VPN here. Uh, See if that works. There you go. And it just, my Pixel 7 Pro, it gives it an IP address and uh, attaches to my network with all my things like immediately. It, it just, it works so well. I, I love it as a uh, tool. I want to do some more follow-up videos because I think it's so nice. Now I lost where I was in comments. Oh, let's see. So much stuff here.
you could tell that the ADD problem probably. <laughs> How similar are VMware ESX networking compared to XCB and G? I've heard it's quite a bit different. Yeah, I mean they work. They have similar features, but yes, they they have a different implementation. So the concepts are the same. So if you understand the concept of how virtualization servers handle networking, I don't think it's a hard pivot. You just got to learn the nuance of the interface of how those things get deployed. I was going to make a joke about Tom Tesla driving home tonight. Then I realized uh, he is in his home studio. Yes. Yeah. And my, my wife is my designated driver. Uh, do you like TailScale more than OpenVPN? My switch OpenVPN has been causing me annoyances. I think TailScale has... I, I did a video explaining... I've, I've done a more recent one here in 2023 about overlay networks versus VPN. They work fundamentally differently. So you can't just say which one is better. It comes down to your use case and what your needs are. Um, but I don't use zero tier as much, uh, but I think zero tier is fine. I just like tail scale because the app works so well on my phone. And, uh, and head scale is pretty easy to set up if you want to manage it yourself with the head scale system. Your Pixel 7 Pro identifies as a Chromebook. No, I have a Chromebook. Uh, I was testing how it works on a Chromebook. So, uh, yes. Oh, I didn't know Headscale got a UI. Maybe I need to revisit Headscale. Headscale is a cool project. I love Headscale. We could tell you started drinking orders. Yes. Alpaca, Alpaca seems too much like horse. I'll agree with that. Uh, Brett loves Tailscale. <laughs> yeah the uh i've got brett using it it works so i loaded it on my synology natively so i set it up on a few different things i'm like this is just neat it just works everywhere so well uh that i'm like okay i i just like this i've got a few clients um consulting clients none of our managed clients that i know of that are using it but i had some consulting clients using it and they just sing its praises. Um, I've all my testing has always gone well. So I'm like, let me put it in production use because I've been traveling a lot and I just turn tail scale on when I travel. So I have access to all my things at home. And I'm like, this is so smooth. It just anywhere I've went, it just has no problems. And it's I I don't know. I really like it. I'm gonna I like it more than when I reviewed it and said I liked it. <laughs> so <laughs> uh well, I am out of whiskey, and at some point, I will run out of energy. I don't know when that point is, but since I got to leave for whiskey, I think I'm going to wind this video down here. Uh, as much fun as it is chatting with everybody. <laughs> okay, so it's a separate project called uh, Headscale UI. That's awesome. Uh, Cat6 or Cat6A, only a few dollars more. Um, Cat6A is harder to work with. Just go with Cat6 unless there's some need you have. It Cat6A will do longer distances um, for 10 gig, but if those distances aren't being met, that doesn't you're wasting money and dealing with harder to deal with cable. So uh, I'm yawning. So I guess that means I am out of energy. I mean, I, it's been a long day. I woke up. I woke up at five. I did a, a public event. I was up on the stage speaking and doing my thing. Um, and then, you know, flying back, talking to everybody. Um, I'm also 14,000 steps, according to my watch, and you know, of all the walking I did. So, <laughs> uh, the TailScale server is really easy to set up on a Zima board. Yeah. I'm sold. Might have to do the head scale thing because I like open source stuff. Sounds like a midnight project. Yeah, great, great project. Um, I knew people would ask about TwinGate. They've reached out to me. I haven't decided if I'll do a video on TwinGate. They 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 want to sponsor a video, and this is the thing. Like they did a sponsored video with Network Chuck, so they paid him to do a video. So everyone keeps asking about it. Um, and they reached out to me now. They want to pay me to do a video on it. And I'm always hesitant. I, I don't do too many paid videos. They're pretty far between. But, hey, there's bills to pay. And that's why we do some of these paid sponsored videos. So um, Kubernetes or SD-WAN? Those are two different things. I don't know what you're asking to compare. Kubernetes is, is uh, orchestration. SD-WAN is, well, SD-WAN, which I have a whole video explaining all the variations of SD-WAN. Because SD-WAN is technically, in my opinion, a marketing term. Um, and 
how you, if you watch my video on it, you'll understand why I call it a marketing term because there's different variations of what SD WAN means to different people. So, yeah, that's not as a uh, hot sauce of the day. I don't have anything new. Maybe next week. Ugh. But I'm yawning now. So, I'll make instead of making all of you yawn, I'm going to bounce. Thank you, everyone, for joining all 100. It was over 100 something people on here. Looks like it was 112, 113. So thank you all for joining. It. Awesome. Love it. And uh, <laughs> SD WAN is just DMVPN. Yes. SD WAN is, is, uh, keeps changing mesh. Well, there's different types. I did an explainer video on SD WAN because there's so many different things. It's, it's all the things. It depends on which marketing person you're talking to. So. Uh, you can do live migration like you do vMotion. So yes, I can take VMs and migrate them from here to there. Uh, I guess that's more like the vMotion. So uh, me and Jason Slagle will do a video uh, talking about, because he's way deeper into VMware. So we'll do a video together uh, and, and we'll do a nomenclature lineup of this is what VMware calls it. This is what XCPNG calls it. And uh, uh, hopefully that'll make it better. So I think, I don't know. Uh, can I call you Tom? I call me Tom. So I guess you can call me Tom. <laughs> That's, that is my name. So we'll go with yes. I, I've had, I've been called worse. <laughs> oh, and Brett's going to talk to me tomorrow. All right. Thanks everyone. I got to go get some more whiskey so I can, uh, yawn one or two more times and then crash later. <laughs>